I'll hit the highlights again. I have no trouble zipping through this because you're supposed to actually be reading this. Peopleware. Okay. <clears throat> these chapters, as you read these chapters, go through lecture, keep in mind this provides some good warning signs for places you go to work. Now, uh, if you're going to work for a startup, yeah, it's going to be, in fact, at, at a startup, you actually want things to be, except for your machines, you want things to be primitive. You don't want startups spending lots of money on, you know, very fancy furniture and so on and so forth. That, that gets you a high burn rate. But within companies, <coughs> this industrial mentality, it's kind of like, oh, we want to be flexible. We're going to have open plan seating. <coughs> that way people can collaborate with each other and we'll have everyone there. Okay. How many of you, when I say flow in terms of programming, how many of you know more or less what I'm talking about? You know what it's like when you're programming and you get, yes, you get into the zone. It, it, it happens, my, in my personal experience, it happens for me best after about seven or eight at night. <coughs> because my body is tired enough that I don't feel fidgety. And of course the phones have stopped ringing and everything else. And you start programming and you look up and five hours have gone past. And you'd swear it was one or two. Okay, I've had that experience any number of times. Sometimes nightly. Uh, when I'm in the start of my The problem is, yes, you see the sunrise. It's like, wait, it's getting light outside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the pro the problem you face with businesses is that that's they don't see software engineering as that creative an activity. It's kind of like oh we're just you know, we're gonna have open seat planning that way we can shift things around as we want to and you know what would be great that people will collaborate because they'll talk to each other. The last thing you want to do when you're programming is talk to other people. <laughs> you don't want to talk to other people. You want people to go away and leave you alone correct, and let you get the work done. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there is, there, I'll get you a second. You know, the, the, part of this is this attitude is, well, you know, if we, if, we give, if we give these programmers offices with Windows, they're going to think they're special and other people are going to resent them. And uh, it's a bit like saying, you know, if we give our doctors private examination rooms and the appropriate equipment and so on, they're going to think they're better than a receptionist out front. It's like, no, they're doctors. They're, in their, they're looking at patients. <laughs> they need the examination room, you know. But but it is it is that sort of attitude. Yes? Uh, just, to, just to mention what you said about working late. Like, I would actually go and do work two hours late on purpose yes. to stay later so that once everybody's gone, we can actually get some work done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what happens. Uh, my personal feeling at this point, because I understand part of the reason businesses go for the open floor plan is because they can't afford something else. And part of my thought is, well, if they're going to do that, they should provide everyone noise-canceling headphones. Yeah, so, though even with that, I mean, my, my, my daughter Crystal says, even with her noise-canceling headphones on, She's got because they have open open yeah. plan. She says there there are people who will just come and stand and look at her, or, or you know, <laughs> and, and some who make noises loud enough to be heard over the noise canceling headphones yeah. and so on. But I have one of those. no, no. But I, I agree with you. The but this this is their observation. This is their observation from twenty years ago. But the workspace given to intellect workers, meaning coders and so on, is noisy, interruptive, unprivate, and sterile. I mean, I've been there. How many of you have, have experienced this where you've, you've had jobs? Yeah. How hard is it to program when you've got all this stuff going on around you? I had a sign on my desk. If I had my headphones in, don't talk to me. Yeah. Like, I had a huge sign. Yeah. But sometimes they talk to you anyway. Yeah. And, and here, here's, here's exactly your point. Never get anything done around here from 9 to 5. Uh, the, now, here's the interest. Oh, give me just a second. I'll get to you. Here's the interesting thing. We've talked about talent. 
that you know some some individuals can outperform other individuals in coding you know by 10 to 1 or actually more factor. The thing that DeMarco and Lister found is that's true for software organizations. There are organizations which are 10 times more productive than other organizations. Uh, and what they found is that the, the programming language being used, the years of experience, uh, the defects, the salary were not factors in productivity. The, it, it boils down to the environment. Yes? So I remember reading that study, and I just want to like clarify or to make sure I understand correctly. When the developers were performing in the test, were they in their native company environment, or were they in a separate testing environment that was uniform for all the participants? Sounded like they were in their company. Well, there, 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 there are several different studies. Some had to do with the environment they were in. So they were specifically testing. Yeah. In other words, it, it, when we're looking, when you're looking for performance as groups, it's like the environment they were in. They were in their respective environments. Uh, They've noticed that the top performer space is quieter, more private, better protected from interruption, larger. I've, I've, I may have already said this, but one of, the, one of the things I'm really proud of at Page is we started off in some very small offices, and when we closed on funding, we moved to a new facility a couple miles away, and one of my non-negotiable demands is that every engineer have her or his own office with the door. And we got it. And I was tickled with that because it made all the difference. You know, we still had commons areas and we had a kitchen that was always stacked with, you know, peanuts, M&Ms, and soda, and so on. But everyone could close their door. And it didn't stop us from talking to each other. Yeah, because you got to talk to each other. Yeah. So, yes, I, I need, yes, you had to. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I'm wondering if, if the best solution is somewhere in between open office space and having own office space. Not not the whole cubicle thing because that's terrible and we know that's terrible. But um, is it terrible? Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the things I've noticed myself is that open office space for me and for my team seems to work really well in the sense that we are all sitting next to each other in a team and we have a small team. And so my thought had been, oh, well, what if we had something that was like an office space that was just for our team? Because what bothers us is having all these other people from different teams come in. And it, it just, it, as long as, it, I mean, when we're, when we sit close to each other, and are able to talk to each other about certain problems we're having with this or that or integration rather than just putting in some kind of text message or something like that. I, I find the communication seems to work better, but I I mean, I don't know what the best solution is. I'm, I've just seen kind of the pros and cons of the open office. Test. Marco and Lister actually talk about this. They said, said office doesn't have to be just one person. Yeah. If you have two or three people who are working together, you can put them in an office together, and you can achieve the same effect because, for exactly what you outlined, they want to communicate with each other. They yeah. usually know to leave each other alone, <laughs> and you know they're 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 protected from everyone else. Noise level is important. You know this is of course most of what they wrote they wrote before they were noise canceling headphones. Uh, but as I said, I've been, you know, from, from my daughter and from others I've talked to, sometimes even with noise canceling headphones, people will find ways to come up and, you know, stand at your desk or cubicle and hover over you and blinders on your yeah, glasses. Pretty much. Uh, and often the response is to hide out to where it's quieter. Yeah. Try and find places. Yeah. Any any further comments on this one? Uh I, I guess I think an open office plan can work with like strict rules about it. Well, you know, some, sometimes it's what you've got. Sometimes you live in. Sometimes it's helpful. At Pages, the last four months before we shipped, we set up a war room where we had 
tables and computers for all the developers and the entire QA staff, and we're all in one room together. But we still all had our offices to go back to. So we could, we could spend time there, and then if, if you really needed alone time, you could go back to your office and do that. You know, sometimes it's just finances, particularly if you're with a startup and so on. Uh, and the danger, I, I will outline the one danger with offices, with doors that close, is that <clears throat> if you don't have a good team leader, you can have developers who basically hide out. They stay in their office with the door closed, but they're not producing anything. Uh, and you really need, you need a team leader who's going to go around and talk to each developer and make sure uh, that they know what's going on there. Hand over here. Yeah, I, I had a couple. I guess like, the first one is like with the agile methodology. Like there was, there's like mentions of like having like a war room culture. What does that mean? I'm sorry, having a like a war, like a war room. Or, like, well, war room, war room is is sort of everyone's there. You're very intense. You're talking quickly. You know what what can we do? You're coding. With with ours, you know, our war room was back in uh, end of '93, early '94, uh, which is well before the agile stuff, but. Like I said, we set up some folding tables, we put computers on them. Uh, you'd go there and we had whiteboards and talked about you know, current bugs we're tracking. We're tracking fine versus fixed rate on defects. And literally as soon as bugs were found, you know, it's like the QA guys say, hey, we just found a new bug, we're filing this. And you know, engineers would say, okay, let me take a look at that real quick. And basically you're trying to short circuit the the more formal communication efforts get a, a very tight turnaround time. Okay. I can't speak to it specifically as far as Agile goes, but that's, that's part of the idea. Yes? Other questions? Oh, we've gone on longer today than I expected. Brain versus body time. Okay, we've, we've talked about flow or being in the zone. Uh, I think most of you know what that's like. And uh, the problem, and I, I think I already told this story, when I was still working on Sundog, it was had built up the whole construct in my head. And Wayne, the, the, my friend and the company owner, came to talk to me, and I refused to even open my mouth and respond to his question because I knew as soon as I did, it would all collapse and go away. Uh, yeah. And fortunately, he went away on his own, though looking a little like, "What, what the hell's wrong with you, Webster?" Uh, and and then later, after I had finished the work, I said, "I'm really sorry, Wayne, but..." And he immediately knew what I was talking about. So, oh, no, no, no problem. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I need to find it. I've got a Rich Tenet cartoon, Fifth Wave cartoon. It shows a darkened building at night with, like, one light on and a little voice box coming out saying, oh, wow, it says programmers do their best coding between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. Uh, and I've had that experience, uh, that the, some of the best coding I have done has been, you know, late evening to the wee small hours. On pages, I was working very long hours, so what I do is I work till about 3 I work until I was starting to doze off and cause problems, uh, which was usually about 3 in the morning. And I had a high back chair and I had a little alarm and I'd set the alarm for 6 a.m. and I'd put my feet up on the desk and sleep. The alarm would go off at 6, I'd go out and walk around the building a few times, come back in and start coding again. Uh, so, <laughs> and I, I did that for months at a time. Yes? So how did his life so I deal with that? Uh, <laughs> she, was, um, she was remarkable and frankly, uh, and I will throw this out there if I haven't said it already, if I had to do it over again, knowing what I do now, I'm not sure I would have done pages as a startup. We had seven kids at home. Uh, I was working, I was averaging 70 hours a week. I was hitting 90 hours a week at times before deadlines. Uh, and I did that for three and a half years until we shipped. Uh, and that was time I would rather, in retrospect, have spent with my kids. I would have been more at home. Frankly, look, looking back, I would have been more inclined to get, in, frankly, an 8 to 5 job. Something to keep in mind when you have those trade-offs. On the other hand, I got two books out of it and pretty much my whole consulting career. <laughs> uh, the telephone, and of course nowadays it's not the telephone, it's, it's all the social media and everything else. 
interruptions. Uh, big slack. Yeah, slack. Uh, which, you know, and some of this you need. Uh, in fact, I, <coughs> I hadn't even thought of this. I was Monday, Monday, Friday morning, I was uh, part of an interview panel with some outside reviewers evaluating the CS department here, and they wanted to talk to three adjunct professors and get some feedback. And, uh, one of the other adjunct professors said, yeah, I don't, I don't even use email with my students. I use Slack. And I thought, why, why didn't I ever think of that? Uh, it says, I find, it, I find that Slack is a, does a much better job of, of getting the word out and people actually responding to what I'm saying. So I may do that in future semesters, but for what it's worth. The point is, <coughs> if, you're, if you're checking all your various communication channels, you're not focused on coding. I'm doing a lot of writing right now. I, I just finished with the co-author 200,000 word novel. I've got another 200,000 word novel. It's up to 50,000 words that I'm working on now. Guess, guess how I get productive? I stop checking Facebook and Twitter. I just say, I'm not going to look at it today. And bam! Oh, look! Look at all the words I wrote. <laughs> yes? So, um, as somebody who has ADHD, <laughs> one of the things that, that helps me in preserving flow is this, there's this thing called the Pomodoro Method, which is basically you set a timer for 25 minutes or so, and after the 25 minutes, you take a five minute break and you get out that, that need to check Do your stuff. apps and stuff because it's, it's something that has become a neural pathway in, in all of our brains yep. to the point that it's hard to shut it off. Yep, it is. And uh, I, I think I, I, I've noticed that I'm still able to achieve flow um, just messing with those timings a little bit and making sure not going over on those those short breaks. Yeah, that's actually, actually that's that's an, that's an excellent idea. Uh, and and you know you're all going to have to find your ways of, of dealing with this stuff. Uh, but again, you know, coming in late. I mean, uh, the door, and and this is again this is the same observation. Uh, most of the most motivation for open spaces do not have to really do with public with productivity, regardless of what they may tell you. It's it's cheap. It's cheap furniture. It's easy to manage. It's hard to it's hard to reassign or rearrange offices. Uh, it's very easy to rearrange tables and partitions and barriers and cubicles. Uh, Da, 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 da. Timeless Way of Building. I'm not going to talk about this slide much. I will recommend The Timeless Way of Building by Christopher Alexander. That's a book that pretty much started the whole design pattern movement 20 years ago. Uh, it's a great book. That said, assignments for next class. Preacher Teams, Burton Gantt Church, resubmission requirements document if you, if you want to. Put in your seven billable hours. Uh, figure out as a team how you're going to divide this up. Again, if you watch the two-hour podcast on software uh, project uh, management, whatever it is, uh, that counts as bill bars. Yes, question? On uh, Learning Suite, is the turn-in times changed Tuesday as well? Or is uh, for, for the reading, I'll have to look. Uh, actually, for people where I think it's just when you're done. Yeah. Uh, so that's there. And podcast. Podcast, I think, is set up for midnight, though. So. I thought the podcast set up for midnight Saturday. Okay, my fault. Podcast is set up for midnight Saturday. But the, uh, the per chart and billable hours are, are set up for midnight Saturday as well. Yes? Uh, just one thing. I've noticed that the, um, the schedule appears to be one week ahead still. Uh, because the assignment for this uh, for today was read people wear part three and read Webster number four unless the intended uh, the, in the, 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 the unless the intended uh, thing from that is saying what what, what you're starting on assigned that day. I, I I think that's that that I'm pretty sure it's meant to say this is what's assigned. This is what okay. you should start doing this week. 
Okay. So I yes. had interpreted that. You're supposed to be finished by the opposite way. Sorry, no, and that should be clear. That's a, that's something that's confused me a few times when I've looked at it. Like, oh no, no, that's we're starting to read this. So clearly that's something I need to fix. Thank you all.